Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. Today we will be viewing the Hyperstar X7 flight tutorial. First things first is that you should note that this is not a fighter craft. It is an extreme heavy lifter cargo craft. If you try to dodge missiles, if you try to do rings around the VAB, you'll be sorely disappointed as it breaks up into little tiny pieces. Now as you can see in the middle of the craft on either side there are cargo bays. These cargo bays are meant to be closed forever. They're not meant to be opened up. They house the reaction wheels that help this thing stay stabilized. The front cargo bay doors however are meant to be opened as they house not only the power supply, the control unit, but also the docking port. The craft is around 350 parts give or take, but it still has a little bit of time loading up. I'm not sure if that's just because KSP is KSP or whatnot, but hopefully when Unity 5 comes out for KSP, it will solve all of our part count problems because as we all know, part count has been KSP's Achilles heel ever since it came out. Now the craft that you're viewing now is not exactly the craft that you're going to be getting in the download. The craft you're going to be getting in the download has some upgrades such as air brakes and a few struts here and there for more stability. The heat shield that you see here doesn't really serve any purpose other than to act like a cap for the fuel tanks. If you turn the ablator all the way down to zero, it turns black, so it's like a nice little painted black cap. Alright, time for some pre-flight checks. Go ahead and hit the space bar. It'll activate the engines and the power supply. The number one key will toggle the air intakes and the number two key will toggle the mode for the rapier engines. Make sure your brakes are off. Hit the Z key for full power. Hit the T key for SAS and you're ready to fly. At about 130, 140 meters per second, go ahead and tilt the nose up to about 35 degrees. At about 6,000 meters, you want to go ahead and tilt the nose back down to about 10 degrees. Now at this point, it's going to take a little while to get up to speed, so you want to go ahead and grab yourself a drink, a coffee, a donut, or whatever. But turn the sass on and just leave it be. Let it do its thing. Until, of course, you reach the desired apoapsis, which in this case, we're going for 100,000 meters. I tried to design it like that so that it's easy to fly, so you don't have to hold its hand all the way up. Now don't forget to hit the number one key in order to close off all your air intakes. Once of course the rapier engines have switched over from air breathing mode to closed cycle mode. This will reduce drag and help save just a little bit more fuel on the way up. Once you've reached about 20 to 10 seconds away from your desired apoapsis, go ahead and point to your prograde and burn into orbit. Now remember, this is still kind of an experimental craft. I really haven't tested it out all the way to its max limits yet. So it's possible it can go much, much higher into orbit. But for now, because of time restraints, let's just go ahead and keep it simple at 100,000 meters. Now, since we don't have a whole lot of time to do rendezvous maneuvers and dock up with a space station, we're just going to go ahead and let our cargo float away right here. Now you don't have to bring up only fuel tanks, you can bring up whatever you want as long as it's 120 tons or lighter and it can fit in that space. Makes a nice little heavy lifter. Just don't forget to adjust the wings accordingly with the offset tool in order to keep the center of lift just behind the center of mass. Now just before landing you want to grab as much fuel as possible and shove it all the way up in front every single last drop from the very back to the very front. Being that this is still an experimental craft, a fully empty hyperstar does tend to have the center of lift get in front of the center of mass. Now, if you want to land this thing back at the KSC, it's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of experience. But in this tutorial, I'm going to help guide you. Now, first things first, you want to bring your periapsis down on top of the KSC to about 20,000, 21,000 meters, give or take. Make sure that when you reach the atmosphere at 70,000 meters, that your hyperstar is at an angle of 35 degrees. Now remember, under no circumstances are you to use the QWEASD keys at all during this descent. This is not a jet fighter, this is a very large cargo lifting bird, and if the G-forces are too high, it will fold under its own weight. If the nose of the craft starts to go above 40 degrees, simply tap the F key. This will toggle the SAS on and off for a split second, allowing the nose to gently come back down. 
If you so desire, you can leave the RCS on during the entire descent. Make sure to tap the 1 key in order to open up the air intakes to help with drag. Now the craft that you'll be receiving does have air brakes on it. Just be careful to look at the g-forces when you do deploy the air brakes. I haven't had time yet to fully test them out. Now the entire re-entry clip that you see in front of you actually took about 20 to 25 minutes give or take that's of course due to the fact that i don't have all that great of a computer and of course the physics engine on ksp as of right now isn't all that great either so both of them together well yeah it took a while so this footage is actually sped up a lot now it's going to take a while in order to get this just right as you can see here i'm still a little rusty i'm about to overshoot the ksc so i dive into the atmosphere it's not really recommended but i'm going slow enough to i really don't have to worry about re-entry heat killing me now at this point i'm going slow enough to where i risk using the wasd geese now, I'm not holding it down hard or doing anything like that. I'm just tapping the WASD keys, tapping them very gently, trying to keep that G-force meter in the green. So anyways, I want to thank everyone here for helping me get through these past couple of weeks that my computer was down. Your support was tremendous on Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, even in the comments below. It was tremendous, and it really... It really meant a, meant a lot to me, and it <laughs> just I can't I can't even put it into words. I can't even put it into words. It was it was amazing. You guys are amazing. Um, some of you do have concerns about where this channel is going to start going with me playing other games and stuff. I want to I want to ease your mind in saying that the games that I'm going to play are going to be about designing stuff, such as Galactic Civilizations 3, where you design your own starships and stuff. It'd be, it'd be really cool to see what I can make out of that. And don't worry, KSP will still be the main show of this channel, so you don't have to worry about KSP going away anytime soon. Also, I'll be starting to look at maybe some horror games or something of that nature where I scream like a little girl, both comically and, of course, having fun. <laughs> but, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This channel will still be fun and enjoyable for everyone. Or at least I'll try to make it that way. I'll try my best to make it that way for you guys. The dream, of course, is to one day be able to do this for a living. To be able to save up enough money to go to school and be able to learn how to do computer graphics and computer animation and art in order to make like a story for you guys you know really like Duna 1 or maybe something else completely different to be able to put all my time effort and energy into this every day to not only increase the quality of the videos but also the quantity of the videos but until then I am Veos Human signing off and have a good night